So in this video, I'm going to show you how to work your core and your abs without killing your back. Hi, this is Dr. Steven, owner and founder of Body Solutions. I've been motivated to shoot this video because on Facebook and on YouTube and on various websites, I've seen many videos of you know, these really fit looking um, girls and guys, typically in their 20s and 30s, doing all kinds of ab routines like you know, your crunches and your bicycle twists and your leg lifts and your leg trunk twists all with the premise of teaching you how to get your sort of abs, right? However, none of those approaches are healthy for you. They're not effective, and I'm gonna show you why in this video. Okay, so let's break down how do you get killer abs without killing your back, right? So first we have to understand the concept of what's called spot reduction, right? So spot reduction. What does that mean? Well. It's a belief that you can actually burn fat from one specific area of the body. And so numerous research has shown that this is not possible. You see, if we were able to you know, burn fat from one area of our body, and let's say you tend to be extroverted, well, and you talk a lot, you would have the leanest jawline in the world, even if you're 200 pounds or 300 pounds or 400 pounds, right? Because your jaw muscles are constantly working as you're talking to people. So unfortunately, that is just not the case. Our body cannot selectively say, let's burn fat from just here or just here or just here. That's just not possible, right? And so then we look at, well, how do we burn fat from this area? Well, it comes down to burning as many calories as possible, right? The more calories that you burn, the more body fat that you lose overall, and some of that will come from this area, right? So you wanna maximize the amount of calories that you burn. So we know that spot reduction is just not possible, right? So the concept is you wanna, if you wanna get abs, you wanna maximize calories burned. Right? You want to maximize your calories burned. And so now let's look at how do we do that? Well, imagine this. All the sit-ups that you're doing, all the crunches, the bicycles, the leg lifts, the trunk twists, they're all designed to isolate a specific part of your abs, right? So you, you, know, you got your crunches to sort of work your six-pack muscles. Then you're going to do your twists to work your obliques. And you might even do some side bends to work the sides. And then you might even do some back extensions to do the back. All of those things are designed to isolate one muscle at a time. How many calories do you think you're burning when you isolate a specific muscle? Well, actually, science has looked at this. So they did a research and they compared how long does it take to lose um, fat walking on a treadmill versus doing sit-ups. And what they found is that for every 10 minutes of sit-ups that you do, it takes about one minute of walking to burn the same amount of fat. Right? So sort of wrap your brain around that. Right? It takes 10 minutes of sit-ups to burn the same amount of fat as just walking for one minute, right? And so it's a great example of how sit-ups and any kind of twists and trunk twists do not burn many calories because you're lying on your back. So your legs are not working, your arms are not working, your back muscles aren't working, your shoulders aren't working. You're just isolating specific muscles, right? So the calorie expenditure is very low. So from a maximizing calories burn perspective, sit-ups, crunches, leg lifts, trunk twists are just not effective. Now let's talk about from a functional perspective. How does our core work? So how does your core actually work? Well, so how are these muscles designed in your body? Well, they're designed to support your spine. You see, your spine, when you move throughout the day, the goal is to keep your spine, I have a model here. So the goal is to keep this stable as you move, right? When you lift up a box, when you push open a door, when you get out of bed, when you get out of your car, the goal of the trunk muscles, all of them, is to brace, right? To, you know, it's almost like uh, wearing a weightlifting belt, right? So guys in the gyms that lift heavy, they wear that belt because it helps them lift more weight. Well, our core muscles do exactly the same thing. You're sort of born with this natural weightlifting belt. And so the goal is to prevent the spine from shifting or twisting like this. Now imagine when you're doing sit-ups, crunches, leg lifts, bicycles, and all that stuff, what's happening is as you're moving your spine, you're basically rubbing your backbones, right? So you have these little joints here that rub. You have the big joint crushing down on the disc that rub repeatedly, right? So imagine how much, how much pressure and damage is going through your back. Well, science says that a sit-up right, just a little single sit-up, is about 740 pounds of pressure, right? So that's like saying mm, three NFL linemen standing on your spine 
as you rub your spine repeatedly. And even worse, if you're doing bicycles, you're rubbing this way and you're twisting, much more rubbing through your spine. And over time, that develops arthritis, accelerated arthritis. It's why you don't see 60, 70 year olds doing you know, leg lifts and crunches and sit ups and stuff, right? Because their backs just can't take it. Well, if you're in your 20s and 30s, it really can take it, but it's accelerating the breakdown of your back. And as far as current technology goes, there's no back replacement yet. We can't replace your spine, right? And so what you wanna do is you wanna conserve the amount of rubbing in your body, right? Because if you keep rubbing, what happens is this disc gets worn out so this bone gets closer to this bone and that can pinch this nerve. If you keep damaging the, the joints right here, they're called the facet joints, you develop bone spurs. And again, those bone spurs, it's a reaction of crushing bone against bone. If you keep doing that, your body's like, well, let me, let me build more bone to protect itself. So those bone spurs are going to pinch the nerve as well over time as you develop them. And of course, over time, as you're repeatedly bending forward like this, every time that you bend forward and round your back forward like this, there are ligaments in the back of your spine. And they respond by, they're like, look, if you're gonna pull on me throughout the day, or if you're doing you know, a set of 50 or 60 sit-ups, repeatedly, they respond, because your body's made to adapt, they respond by getting bigger and thicker. Unfortunately, when that ligament gets thicker, it's called a ligamentum flavum, when it gets thicker, it takes up more space in this hole, and thus, it can pinch the nerve. Right? So over time, all those things contribute to back arthritis. And so we know that you don't want to do repeated motions like this in your spine as you're working your core, because there, one, the core doesn't work that way from a functional perspective. From a functional perspective, they should really all work at the same time so you can push and pull things in life without your spine shifting. And that's how you should train your core. Now, here's the beauty of this. When you train your abs, your core correctly, you actually get abs much faster. So let me explain. So the last concept is how do you get fast abs, right? Fast abs. Well, you work them the way they were designed to work, right? So for example, let's say if you're you know, picking up a bag of groceries, and let's say if, you're, if you wanna be in the gym, you can take a band that's kind of pulling. Let's say if I took this weight and I simply brace my core, and just brought this weight across my body like this far, right? So as it's moving across my body, my trunk right now has to brace pretty hard so my spine doesn't twist and move. And now if I were to do that as I'm squatting and moving that weight across my body, my legs are working, my core is working, my shoulders, my back, so many muscles are working that you're gonna burn way more calories and you're working your abs, right? So proper ab exercises are disguised. Right? They don't look like ab exercises. They look like leg, shoulder, back, chest, core exercises all at once. And that's the, that's the proper way to train your abs. It's training them to build a skill of coordinating all of these trunk muscles to work with your other muscles in your body. Right? Because when you isolate them on the floor or if you're just hanging and lifting your legs, that's not how they would ever function in life. Right? So you're actually making your ab muscles dumber. Right? And so in other words, you're training them to not work and not coordinate and not synchronize with the other muscles in your body, right? So not only is it ineffective for burning fat, you're actually making your back at higher risk for injury when you're doing the sit-ups and the crunches and the leg lifts and the bicycles, All right? And so when you train with these functional exercises where the weight is moving across your body, or even if imagine if you took a dumbbell and you bent over and you stood in a lunge position and you rode, that's a great core exercise, right? And so those exercises that work your core indirectly actually works them in a way that was designed for life. You're actually training them to be better skilled, right? So when you exercise for abs, for shoulders, for whatever body part, you wanna keep in mind that there's a high skill component to movement. You know, exercise in a gym or outside or in home isn't just a tool to, to work that muscle. When you move your body, your body's learning that movement. And so if you're doing these movements that don't help you move in life, you're actually making your body worse at moving life, right? So it's a skill way of looking at movement. And that's what we sort of do here in Body Solutions. We teach people how to look at movement from a skill perspective and not just isolating muscles for you know, looking better. It's about moving your body more efficiently, more, more effectively. And so I challenge you to reframe how you're training your core and get away from exercises that isolate these muscles because you do not want to isolate. When you move in life, you don't 
isolate any single muscle. They're all moving at the same time to help your body coordinate and function. And so one of the things I wanna offer you is if you have any questions, I'm gonna shoot a video on how to train your core. There's an exercise video. And these are exercises, again, that don't look like core exercises, but they are. Every one of these exercises you'll see actually engages your core in many different directions and actually trains you to be better in life. Hope you had this um, insight, new insight into how to train your core. And I hope you share this with other people because this is such a epidemic. You know, I don't know if you know this, nine out of 10 Americans will suffer back pain enough to take you out of work. That's 90% of you watching this. At some point in your life, you're gonna have back pain enough, not just a little achiness that you wake up with, but back pain enough where you're like, I can't do life. That's a serious problem. And so some of that comes from this. So the improper ways of training your core, some of it comes from posture, some of it comes from sitting too much. But this, sort of your gym trying to get ab exercises is a pretty large component to that. So I hope you found this video helpful. I'm here to answer any of your questions.